Day one is always an exciting day, and uh, all that 75 degree weather is behind us. Now we're in the January weather, 50 and windy. Uh, but everybody associated with our program is excited to get started. Uh, we'll get uh, get going today and get uh, first weekend behind us and get really ready to play three weeks from today. So I'm eager to see our team and see how they respond. I know they're ready to start practice. How they perform and how they go, we'll see. But uh, uh, they're ready to get back on the field. It's been a while, so can't wait to get started. Any position changes you're uh, interested to see how, how that works out in the beginning of the season? Well, the biggest change from last year to this year is we're moving Corey Childers from our closer role last year, which he was outstanding, had 10 saves, and we're moving him back into the rotation, and he'll go uh, into the number one slot on Friday night. So that's going to be the biggest change. I'm not concerned about the change because he's done it. He did it as a freshman. Uh, but it's the best thing for our uh, team to start the season. And then that change moves Mark Skinner back to more of the traditional closer role, which he was uh, he was in that role as a freshman. So uh, that's going to be the biggest change. Everybody else is pretty much in the sim similar spot moving from one year to the next. You had a couple uh, players stand out during the summer and then the fall, specifically Joey. How much can they carry over that success in the offseason into the start of practice? Well, I certainly hope it carries over. Dennison had a great summer, and he was our best player in the fall by far. And he's a guy we're looking to, to have a big year. He's a senior. Uh, he's a veteran guy. He's played a lot of baseball, and he had a great junior year all-conference. Uh, he's a guy that we'll count on early and, and probably throughout the year. But I, I fully expect him to be one of our key guys. And, you know, we've got older guys in the program that have been here. T.J. Bender's a five-year guy, and Matt Sanders is a three-year starter and we've got experienced in the lineup I, I really like that combination uh Dennison's going to be a key key guy for our club no question any more, any more power from, from these guys this year or? well you think so uh, I, you know you, I, you never expect the power numbers uh, you don't you don't count on that but uh with experience and age comes typically more power and Dennison's a guy that might be a uh, part of that equation uh Justin Friend comes to mind as a guy that might produce a little bit more power, but uh, hopefully we'll be a good offensive team all the way around. Uh, power is a part of that. We're a faster team this year. We've got a few more guys that can run, uh, and I think our overall lineup is going to be better uh, from top to bottom. So I hope power is a part of that. You're heading into year two for yourself. Uh, tell what you learned in year one. I've told people this, and this is the best thing I can describe. Uh, the last year I was a head coach was 2000, so it had been a while. And I sit, sat next to and stood by Bobby Pierce for 13 years. And last year reminded me I had forgotten how difficult it was to be the head coach. He made it look really easy. Trust me, I, I sat there for 13 years. So um, I had forgotten how difficult it can be at times. And through my first year, I, I learned an awful lot as to how to handle my, my own situation, hopefully handle the ball club better. Uh, I've got a great coaching staff. I've got an older, experienced team. Uh, I'll be a better head coach here, too. But uh, that gum Coach Pierce made it look real easy for 13 years, and uh, hopefully I can get back into that mode this year. You know, Coach, uh, just talking about a long off season. now you get to the point. Talk about the excitement level just from a coaching aspect for the whole staff. Well, look, the season is what we all train for and live for, and I can't get here fast enough. And you know, we start school in August, and that's a long time before we get to play a baseball game. But I tell our team when the season starts, it sure does go quick. And uh, so enjoy every minute of it. But we all live and die for the competition. That's why we're here. And I'm excited for this team. I'm excited each year. Each year is a unique challenge and a new team. Uh, I'm excited to get started. Our conference is really good. Our non-conference schedule, I think, is very challenging. We're going to be t uh, we're going to be challenged every time we go out there. But uh, baseball season is uh, is what we all uh, live live for, and can't wait to get it started. You've known that um, the Coastal Carolina is going to be coming down the pipeline in the last few years. It's the fact that they're the you know defending national champs ramp up the excitement. Well, you know, I, I think it does. I think it puts a spotlight on our conference in a different light. Uh, that they're new members. Uh, we get, for the first time in our Division I history, we get an opportunity to play the defending national champion this spring. That's never happened. We go to their place in April. Uh, so I think it heightens the, the uh, attention toward our league, which I think we deserve as an overall league. It's a really good league from top to bottom. 
Uh, we've got a different format this year in divisional play with an east and a west division, which will be a new wrinkle. And of course, we're in there with the defending champion, Coastal Carolina's on the eastern side. So uh, we look forward to the challenge. And uh, the Sun Belt Conference is a great league to be a part of. Uh, we've had good success in this league, and I hope it continues. What does it going to take to have that consistency to win uh, and string together some wins? Y'all had some ups and downs last year. And it has some consistency in the tournament because uh, y'all had some, some rough goes of it. Uh, you make great points, Jeremy. The, the, the tournament uh, aspect of our program the last three years has been below par, and, and we've got some things, I think, in place to address that. That's much later down the road, obviously, but we, we've, we're, we're trying to change a few things that maybe help prepare for that. Baseball, the, the, the most difficult part of baseball is also the formula for success in baseball. It's being consistent in your play. Uh, and at you know college age player, that consistency is the hardest thing to find. To be a good club, you got to play solid defense every day. You got to pitch uh, fundamentally sound every day. And you got to survive offensively because that's what should come up and down. The offense goes up and down. So the formula doesn't change. Our team, their team, it's all the same. Solid pitching, solid defense typically leads to solid performance and a lot of wins. So we're always searching for more consistent play from our own individual players and then collectively as a team. Uh, I, I like our offensive club. I think we'll have a chance to score runs, but that's not how you win. You win with pitching and defense, and that's where we'll focus our attention on, certainly in this preseason work. Coach, can you talk a little bit more about the strength of schedule? You guys are taking on seven tournament teams from last year. Uh, just what does it say about this program going to the I, I, You know, I love the schedule, and uh, we try to schedule challenge every year. Uh, you know, Xavier, we've never played. Uh, we opened the year with a four-game series. That, that schedule was done three years ago, and quite honestly, you, you never know what to expect. They were in a regional final in Nashville last year. They returned seven starters and three of their best pitchers. So we'll have our hands full right out of the chute, which I like. Our, our team will be prepared for that. Uh, then we go to, you know, we play at UNO, who's got an experienced team returning. We got a great tournament in Pensacola uh, leading into conference play. And then we got a 30 game brutal stretch in the Sun Belt. And then, oh, by the way, we got Alabama, Auburn, Sanford, UAB, Jacksonville State along the way. So it's a great schedule. And, at a school like Troy, uh, I challenge our team uh, to be prepared every time out. It's hard to do that 56 times in a season, uh, but I think our schedule gives us a chance if we're in position late in the year, I think it gives us a chance to understand how to go to an NCAA tournament if we're fortunate enough to get that opportunity and be prepared for those challenges late in the season. Who's some newcomers uh, in the lineup and in the pitching rotation that you could make some noise going in? Well, it's hard to single out new guys because you don't quite know what to expect. Uh, one, one new slash returner that's going to get opportunity early in the season is Drew Frederick, who's a redshirt freshman. Drew sat out last year in our program. Uh, he's an infielder. He's going to play some third base early. He's also a shortstop by trade. Uh, he's an exciting player. He can run. He's a great athlete. But he's young and inexperienced. So that early season play is going to be important for him. Uh, on the mound, we've got uh, a couple of transfer. Uh, Darren Osby is the first guy that comes to mind, a junior college uh, right-handed pitcher out of Tennessee. He's originally from Georgia. Uh, big physical guy, 6'4", got a good arm. Uh, he's had great success in junior college the last two years. We, we, we're counting on him to be a guy that uh, kind of moves the needle in our rotation. And then we got six young guys on the mound, freshmen, that I can't single any of them out yet because uh, I'm not sure, but I sure do like that group. They've got a lot of ability and a lot of talent. I can't wait to get them out there individually to see how they perform. But it's a really talented group. That group may not make the noise this year, but eventually those names will be very familiar to our uh, program the next couple, three years. What do you expect from guys like Trey Johns, Corey Hill, Scott Sal, uh, and Houston Mabry? Well, uh, you know, we've got a great core group from the, from the local area. You mentioned, you know, Houston Mabry's a senior. He was in our rotation late in the year last year. I expect him to be very good as a senior. Trey Johns did a great job last year out of our bullpen. The, the first month of our season, the first two months, he was our best guy, most consistent bullpen performer. So I look for him to, to build on that as a senior. Uh, Gill's a young guy, sophomore, that uh, should be ready to tackle a great role this year. He got valuable experience as a freshman uh, going into year two. He should be better. And then, you know, Stiles, a guy coming off an injury that had to sit out last year as a left-hander, I'm hopeful can make a move to bolster our bullpen. 
Uh, and then the other two local guys we've already touched on, Dennison, you guys know him, and then Chase Smart, my son, who's a sophomore. I expect him to be more efficient as a sophomore, a better player in year two. Uh, it's a great core group of guys that are from our local area that I'm really proud to coach. Coach, you just talk about what it's like to coach your son on the Division One level. Learned a lot last year. Um, I love him being here uh, as a dad, certainly, but as a coach, I learned a lot. I think he learned a lot. I, I think I'll handle him better in year two, and I know he'll handle that role better in year two. Uh, he's a good player. Um, he's one of our uh, best catchers and will catch quite a bit for this team. Uh, he came in with very, very high expectations based on his past. I think they were maybe unfair initially. Uh, so with year under his belt, I, I look for him to move toward being a more consistent player in year two for our team, provide some good leadership behind the plate and contribute offensively. Uh, he's a talented catcher that our pitchers like to throw to, and that's going to play a big role for our team, how he does behind the plate. Will he still maybe see some time in the infield as well? It depends. Um, a lot of it depends on the health behind the plate. we got a couple guys banged up back there that we need to get healthy. Initially, it'll be primarily a catch role, but he is a talented defender in the infield. He can play third, uh, but I look more toward the plate this year. Coach, does it feel pretty good? To, and you know, you're talking about this lineup. You got a bunch of guys, a lot of experience. H having the unknown a little bit with the pitching rotation, does it feel pretty good at this point? Just starting practice, you know, to have a little confidence that your lineup can, you know, provide some run support. Well, you know, each year, each team is different. This time last year, I was uh, really confident that our pitching staff was in great shape because we had two seniors at the top of the rotation, and our lineup was inexperienced. So that's was a concern last year, can we score? I, I really feel this year it's the exact opposite. We're not as settled at the rotation spots, but our offense is in really good shape going into the year. Unfortunately, of the two, I would prefer the, the, the pitching combination only because a good offensive team can still struggle at times to score. It's difficult to score. So what I like about our team, the experience factor, defensively I think will make an early impact on our team. I think we're going to be a good defensive club because of that experience in key spots. Uh, if you throw strikes and catch it, you got a great chance to win. You don't have to score big. Hopefully if we score big and catch it, we'll be in great shape. Great shape.